Hello, Michael Brown here. I want to do a video overview today of the Pentex Stereo Adapter. I have it mounted on the camera right here. This is a device that basically has a series of mirrors and it will take and divide a 35 millimeter frame into left and right pictures so you can do stereo photography. I'm using it on a Sony A9 camera which is a 24 megapixel full frame camera. When you purchase the Pentex stereo adapter, it was designed to be used actually on a film camera. Uh, I actually purchased this, I think around 1990. So it's a fairly old device, but they still make them. At that time, it came with a slide viewer. And I think these days it comes with a print viewer. But the idea was you would photograph on 35 millimeter transparency material. You would put the slide in the viewer and then looking through the viewer, you could see your image in wonderful 3D. Um, it was cool, but it had some limitations uh, because it was mounted on a 50 millimeter lens. And now you're dividing that full frame into left and right. You ended up shooting a portrait orientation picture. So if you wanted, you know, uh, landscape orientation, it didn't work that well. But I found that this is really a terrific attachment for making 3D portraits of people. Uh, the Pentex stereo adapter, they recommend use uh, apertures of between f5.6 and f8. And they also recommend that you shoot from uh, one and a half to four meters. So, you know, fairly mid-range photography. So because of the portrait orientation of the system and you want to be relatively close, uh, it just lends itself to pictures of people. And what I really like about it is it allows me to use it on my digital SLR. And when I want to use electronic flash, it just makes everything so easy to sync. Often stereo photographers use two cameras side by side and they're synced with a wire. And generally the synchronization is fairly accurate for just normal shutter speeds. But if you try to use electronic flash, you know, Sometimes neither camera will capture the flash. Sometimes one camera will and the other won't. It's very difficult to achieve good flash synchronization with two separate cameras. But with one camera, it's easy. The other thing I like about using a full frame camera is uh, you can shoot at very high ISO. So I can shoot ISO 5000, 10,000 and still get some good results where the smaller cameras I use typically for stereo photography have one inch sensors. They're not that great with low shutter speeds. So the digital SLR, you know, it allows me to really control my shutter speeds, pick my ISO, can do my white balance, and it lets me shoot raw. And I really like shooting raw, and not all cameras allow you to shoot raw. Raw is like a digital negative format, and allows me, after I've made the exposure, to correct or fine-tune my color balance and to correct and fine-tune the exposure. So if I was either slightly overexposed or underexposed, I can correct that in post. So the Pentex stereo adapter, you can get them on eBay and they typically sell for $100 to $150, something like that. They mount on the camera much the way you would mount a filter. The adapter I purchased has a 52 millimeter uh, thread on it. The Sony lens actually is a 49 millimeter filter thread. And so I purchased a small uh, step up adapter. I think it was four dollars and that allows me to mount this 52 millimeter device on a 49 millimeter uh, filter lens. So it's designed to work with either 50 or 55 millimeter uh, full frame lens. So with that, what kind of pictures can we take? Well, let's open up bridge. These are some 3D pictures I've made with this Pentex uh, stereo adapter. I'll just Go through here. We'll look at them one at a time. So you can see there's left and right views. If you look at it, you can see sort of this fuzzy band in the center running vertically. That's where the two images are overlapping slightly. Now, by using uh, higher F numbers, like if you went above F8, that would turn into a solid band, but it also reduces the image area. And if you use a very wide aperture like F12, the images would overlap even more in the center. So again, the recommendation is to use either F5.6 or F8. So we look at these, it's actually pretty clean on the 
outer edges, but that center edge where the uh, black band goes through, you can see there's some vignetting there. And that's just one of the limitations of the device. Now, I typically crop these pictures. The, the vignetting doesn't bother me. So these are all portraits I made with the adapter. And we can come in and process these. Like, I'll just pick this one here. I can tell it's underexposed. I'm going to open that in camera raw. Now I can go in and hit this auto button and you can see how it brought back the exposure. Now as it turns out, uh, she has white gloves on, this background has white and black stripes, so there are neutral uh, colors in that. I can take this little eyedropper tool and click on something that's neutral. So here the white background, you can just see it warmed up the flesh tones a little bit. Now sometimes, like this corset she's wearing, it has black with folds in it. If I want to open up the shadows, I can do that even more. And that, you know, gives us more shadow detail. Likewise, if I want to pull on the highlights, I could. But that looks pretty good as is. So I'm going to hit done on that. Now this one, you can actually see some severe vignetting. So let's look over here. I shot that at uh, f5.6. Uh, it's worse than it normally would be, and I don't know exactly why. I was originally going to guess that, that I shot it at a, a lower aperture, but the metadata does not lie. Here's a studio scene, ever so slightly overexposed. So I'll just come in. I can either, I'm really concerned about the highlights here, so I can either bring that down like so, or bring my exposure down just a bit. So I find that's a little better. So this is one I had worked on before, but now I'm just fine-tuning it a little bit. Let's see here. This looks like a fun one. Let's open that up. So all the sliders here are at the default position. I'll hit auto. That brought the flesh tone down a little bit. I like that. Let's check color balance. This was shot at 125th of a second, so I'm guessing I used electronic flash. And a good neutral might be this here. Actually, the color balance was pretty good on that one already. So we'll hit done. All right, let's open up one of these to process in Stereo Photo Maker. So these are all raw format images, and you saw how I was able to fine tune either the exposure or color balance. Stereo Photo Maker doesn't want to work with a raw file. So what I'm going to do is convert these to JPEG. So I'll just grab a few of them here. I'll grab this one. I'll grab this one. Oh, what else? Let's grab this one. That's a fun one. Open those in camera raw. I'll hit Command-A to select them all. I'll take this little download button and I'll select my folder, which is on the desktop. Uh, Pentex Stereo Adapter Video, and I'll just uh, save that. Let's see. I'll make a folder called JPEGs. JPG. All right, so I'm going to save them in JPEG file format with a quality of 10, so that will slightly reduce the file size. There's a two remaining, one remaining, it's done. So we can close this. We'll minimize Adobe Bridge. And we'll call up our Stereo Photo Maker, which is right here. And go File Open. It's actually Open Stereo Image. We'll find our JPEG folder. Grab that first one. So here's our image, left-right viewpoint. Now I'm going to put this in anaglyph mode and I'm going to take my, you know, red cyan glasses and look at that. Right now she's very forward of the window and that's the way it would have looked on a slide. And I can see there's just ever so slight vertical uh, disparity there that we want to correct. So using the auto button in Stereo Photo Maker, box comes up and did a very slight rotation correction, adjusted vertically by 54 pixels, horizontally by 188 pixels. So I'm going to close that 
I'm actually see if I can maximize that, make it a little bigger, which I did. Now I'll view that. Yeah, that looks much better. She's still a little farther forward than I would like for my, my own taste. I'm going to crop in this image, which I typically do with my stereo adapter images because of the vignetting you sometimes get on the side. So it's 35 millimeter aspect ratio. I'm going to keep that as four by six. And I'm going to come in here and I crop that. We don't need that chair there. I like it just like that. Now, she's still a little farther forward than I want, so I'll go to Adjust, Easy Adjustment, and I'm going to slide this back a little bit so that left arm of hers won't be sticking through the window. That's good, just like that. Hit OK, and I like that. So now I could save that as an anaglyph just by going Save Stereo Image. I typically view my images in a stereo headset, the uh, Quest 2. Uh, I can view them on other devices like the Loom Pad. I often just free view my images. But if I don't want to save an anaglyph, I'll go back to side by side. And now I'll go File, Save. I can save the stereo image as a side by side, or I can save it as an MPO. I find a lot of devices like the Quest Viewer and the Loom Pad can recognize MPOs and just display those as is. If I save it as just a side-by-side, -side, then typically I'll have to go in and either relabel the image underscore left right, depending on the device I'm using, or I'll just mark it side-by-side, -side, and when I get into the device, I'll manually set up that it's a side-by-side -side image. So to keep things simply simpler on the back end, I'll just save that as an MPO. So that's file name. I'll hit save. And that's done. Let's open up another one. So this picture here, again, I'll put it in anaglyph mode. I'll look at it. Actually, quite hard to look at <laughs> in this mode. And if you look at the background here, like this circle on the wall, you can see there is some pretty significant vertical disparity. I may have had the adapter slightly tilted on the camera, or I may have held the camera at an angle, you know, errors can creep in from either of those things. But will it Stereo Photo Maker do its magic and correct that? So 78 pixels, uh, vertical disparity, had to rechange the horizontal pixels by 233 pixels. Oh, see now, that looks terrific to view. It looks tricky on my screen. Now I know YouTube does some crazy compression, so I don't know if the analog colors will come in as pure when you're watching the video, but you should be able to get a sense, even if there's some ghosting, which I have no ghosting directly on my computer, that this is a much better alignment. So I'll close that. Again, I'll go in to do my cropping. Let me do something like this, but I'm just going to raise that up so we don't have the individual fingers. That looks good. The stereo window looks good, too. I, I mean, no need to adjust that. She's absolutely in the right position. So let's save this one. We'll go save stereo image. We'll save that as an anaglyph. Now, it's in JPEG format. JPEG compression often messes up the anaglyphs as well. So if you want, you can come in here and select the TIFF format. And somehow in doing that, it lost my file name. So I'll just call it anaglyph G. And we'll save that. Now, for my purposes, I could either save that now as a side-by-side. -side. 
and you can see the preview here. So if you look at that preview window, it says now we're at uh, roughly 4,200 pixels horizontally and 3,000 some vertically. So if you take that 42 and divide it in half, it's roughly 2,000 by 3,000 pixels each individual image. So you have basically a, a 6 megapixel uh, capture. So we went from a 24 megapixel full frame camera, divided that in half, so we ended up with two um, 12 megapixel images, but by the time I did my cropping, we're down to about six megapixels per image. So we'll save that. And I like viewing these in the Quest headset, so I'll just save that as an MPO. And then I can load that onto my headset and just view that as is using the Pegasus application. All right, let's do one more. So I often like making stereo cards, which use a square format. So we'll process this one in that way. First thing I'll do is go to anaglyph mode. And if you look at the text on that marquee where it says the devil wears Prada, you can see the cyan text is much lower than the red text. If you look at that broad way uh, in the center here, you can see that's off. So there's vertical disparity there. And again, I don't know if I held the camera crooked, if the uh, attachment itself had shifted, because there's some flexibility here. You know, I can rotate that a little bit. So you definitely want to make sure it's horizontal before you shoot. All right, let's hit auto. And what's great is we can correct this with the digital image. If I had photographed it with that disparity with the slide, they just become difficult to view. And of course, on the slide, the stereo window is fixed. You can't correct that. Now, if you look at the text, either on the marquee or where it says Broadway, you can see that vertical disparity has been corrected. It was off by 40 pixels. Now I'm going to close that. I'm going to come over here to my free cropping. This time I want to do a square, so I'm going to change this aspect ratio from 4 by 6 to 4 by 4, which is the same as 1 by 1. So I'll hit that. And now I'll come in here and do this. And now that's cropped. Now you can see the right edge of the image is kind of has a cyan cast to it, the left edge has a red cast to it. That's due to the vignetting of that adapter. Um, it's more noticeable in anaglyph when you actually view that as a side-by-side -side like this. You don't really notice it. And when you put it in a viewer, it's just it's a non-issue. Non but it is there and it is something to be aware of. The other thing that sometimes happens is because this system has mirrors in it, sometimes you might get a highlighter reflection from a flash or some flare that shows up on one image and not the other. And that's just the nature of of the adapter. I actually wish it had a lens hood to, to get rid of potential flare issues, but it doesn't. And for what it is, it just works just fine. So I will save that as MPO. So that would be all ready for viewing. So there you have it. Pentex stereo adapter mounted on a digital camera. It initially came with a slide viewer. Now I believe they ship them if you buy it new with a print viewer. But a very handy device if you are doing portrait photography or any close-up subject that lends itself to a, a portrait orientation picture. Uh, hope you enjoyed this overview on how to use the adapter and how to process the pictures.